George Washington was 57 years old when he took office. He was quickly surpassed as the oldest president by the second president, John Adams, who was 61. The next four presidents were older than Washington, but all very close in age, at 57 or 58. It took until 1829, 30 years after the start of Adams' presidency, for someone else to claim the title of oldest president, with Andrew Jackson taking office also at 61. Following Jackson was his acolyte, and briefly the youngest president, Martin Van Buren. And right after Van Buren was William Henry Harrison, who surpassed both Jackson and Adams as the oldest president by far. When Adams became the oldest president, he was four years older than Washington had been. Jackson and Adams were both 61. Jackson had just been a few months older. William Henry Harrison was 68. His age had been an issue in the election, with Democrats painting him as an old, out-of-touch imbecile. Some, however, genuinely feared he would die in office. With a charismatic and revolutionary campaign, Harrison won the election anyways, but did end up dying in office after only a month. From 1836 onwards, the title for youngest president was constantly changing. In fact, from Van Buren to Theodore Roosevelt, it changed six times. In about that same span of time, Harrison held the title for oldest, with few presidents even coming close to taking it. One of those who did come close, relatively, was Zachary Taylor, another military general, like Harrison, and another Whig. Taylor was only elected two elections after Harrison. Harrison was elected in 1840 and Taylor in 1848. The similarities between the two weren't just coincidental. The usual Whig strategy was running popular war generals. They did so in four out of the five elections they participated in. Just by nature of this background, these were older men. Zachary Taylor was 64, four years younger than Harrison. After Taylor, only one other president in the 19th century was 60 or older. Age was less of an issue for Taylor than it was for Harrison. In fact, when he was nominated by the Whigs, he was still serving in the military and had recently won major victories in the Mexican-American War. Taylor did have an exceptionally weathered and wrinkled face due to so much time in the sun while on the battlefield and in the fields at his farm back home. Taylor was the second president to die in office. This wasn't necessarily because of his age, but rather it was likely due to contamination in Washington's sewage system, which may have also affected his predecessor, James K. Polk, one of the country's youngest presidents. Polk became very sick, too, but survived. The following election, the Whigs ran another general, 66-year-old Winfield Scott. However, he lost to Democrat Franklin Pierce who, at 48, became the youngest president. However, the oldest president's list wouldn't have to wait long for another addition, this time from the Democrats. Franklin Pierce failed to win renomination, and the Democrats went with 65-year-old James Buchanan. Buchanan had experience at various levels of government. He'd been a representative, foreign minister, senator, and secretary of state and he wanted to capstone his political career with the presidency. From Abraham Lincoln to Franklin D. Roosevelt, the list of oldest presidents had no alterations. The closest were Andrew Johnson and Woodrow Wilson, who both took office at 56, a little younger than Madison Jefferson and Quincy Adams, who were inaugurated at 57. Only in 1945 was there a change to the list when 60-year-old Harry S. Truman took office. Not only did Truman make the list, but he made the middle of the list, pushing down most of the early presidents and finally pushing Washington off the list. Truman was vice president to Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1945 and only assumed office when Roosevelt died. At 60, Truman was only three years younger than Roosevelt it seems to be a strange dynamic. 
The Democrats were expecting Roosevelt to die sometime during his fourth term, so they knew full well that Truman would be his successor, even though he wasn't much younger. The issue with Roosevelt wasn't so much his age, however, it was his health. Roosevelt had been suffering with health problems for decades, which were likely only exacerbated from the stress of three presidential terms. Truman was the first president to be 60 or older at the start of his presidency since James Buchanan, making him the first in nearly 90 years. At the end of his second term, he was 68 and just a few months older than Harrison had been when he took office. Despite Truman being the only addition to the list in so much time, his immediate successor also made the list. Republican Dwight D. Eisenhower was 62 making him older than Truman, Adams, and Jackson. He was also the first Republican to make the list, though certainly not the last. Eisenhower served out two terms. He was 70 by the end of his presidency, meaning he was the first man to serve as president at 70 and the oldest man to ever be president. Previously, this title was held by Jackson, who was just barely 70 when he left office at 69, with Buchanan as a close second only a few months younger. Also like Jackson, Eisenhower's post-presidency was eight years. Both men died at age 78. Upon leaving office, Eisenhower still wasn't as old as William Henry Harrison would have been had Harrison served out a full term. 38th President Gerald Ford was 61 a year older than Truman was, and only about a hundred days younger than Adams. On January 20th, 1981, Ronald Reagan assumed office at age 69. He took the title of the oldest man inaugurated, a title held by Harrison for nearly 140 years. With his birthday on February 6th, Reagan was nearly two weeks away from turning 70. Even when he first entered politics, Reagan was relatively old. When he became governor of California in 1967, he was already 55. That is the median age for presidents at inauguration. When James Buchanan was 55, he was serving as James K. Polk's Secretary of State and had already been in politics for three decades. The three youngest men inaugurated Theodore Roosevelt, John F. Kennedy, and Bill Clinton, ages 42, 43, and 46, already had long political careers even at these ages. Like with William Henry Harrison, age was once again an issue. Reagan easily passed it off, usually with jokes, being he was one of the nation's wittiest and most charismatic presidents, something his age made all the more impressive. When he left office, he was 77. In his post-presidency, Reagan developed Alzheimer's disease. He publicly announced the diagnosis in 1994. Many have speculated he was suffering with the disease much earlier, even during his second term. But this has never been proven. Just after Reagan, another president made the list. Actually, it was Reagan's vice president, George Bush, who was inaugurated president in 1989 at age 65. Bush was right between Taylor and Buchanan in age, meaning Reagan still held the title for the oldest, but, relatively speaking, not for long. 36 years later, in 2017, Republican Donald Trump was inaugurated at age 70. Had his Democratic rival Hillary Clinton won, she would have become the second oldest president at 69 being just a few months younger than Reagan had been. In his bid for re-election, 74-year-old Trump faced off against an even older opponent. Democrat Joe Biden was 77. While not always, it was often the case, when one of the oldest presidents was elected, he had run against a significantly younger man. In 1840, William Henry Harrison was nine years older than Van Buren the incumbent, who was just nearing 60. In 1856, James Buchanan was 22 years older than his main rival, Republican John C. Fremont. And in 1984, Ronald Reagan was 17 years older than Democrat Walter Mondale. 
there was only a four-year age difference between Trump and Biden, and both were in their 70s. When Donald Trump was born, Harry S. Truman was president. George W. Bush and Bill Clinton were also born during Truman's administration. However, Bush was first inaugurated in 2001, 16 years before Trump, and Bill Clinton in 1993, 24 years earlier. When Joe Biden was born, it was Franklin D. Roosevelt. Both Trump and Biden had put themselves on the stage as potential presidential candidates decades before ever taking office. On June 9, 1987, Joe Biden declared his candidacy for the 1988 Democratic presidential nomination. He ultimately dropped out even before the primaries, but if he'd somehow won the presidential election, he would have been inaugurated at 46 and would have become the third youngest man ever inaugurated and second youngest elected. Instead, George Bush won that election, and Biden only became president long after the presidency of Bush and the presidency of Bush's son. Also in 1988, Donald Trump teased a presidential run. He said he had no plans to run at the moment, and said he didn't want to be president, but that he might step up if he felt America kept declining. At Biden's inauguration in 2021, he was 78. This makes him not only the definitive oldest man ever inaugurated, but also the oldest man to ever serve as president. Ronald Reagan was 77 at the end of his term. Trump and Biden's vice presidents, Mike Pence and Kamala Harris, were 57 and 56 when inaugurated to their offices. This is older than the median vice president age of 54. However, it's relatively young when compared to Trump and Biden. It's not uncommon for old presidents to pick significantly younger running mates. James Buchanan's vice president was only 35 when he ran on the Democratic ticket and only 36 when he took office. The second youngest vice president, Richard Nixon, was 40, 23 years younger than Dwight Eisenhower. And Millard Fillmore, the nation's 10th youngest president, was originally vice president to Zachary Taylor. Fillmore was 49 when he became vice president, 16 years younger than Taylor. The nation's oldest presidents aren't spread out as evenly as the youngest, with most being early or relatively recent. John Adams, 2nd. Andrew Jackson, 7th. William Henry Harrison, 9th. Zachary Taylor, 12th. James Buchanan, 15th. Dwight Eisenhower, 34th. Ronald Reagan, 40th. George Bush, 41st. Donald Trump, 45th, and Joe Biden, 46th. At this point, only a president 61 or older could make the list. Of the 10 oldest, one was a Federalist, three Democrats, two Whigs, and four Republicans. Two of the youngest presidents, Theodore Roosevelt and Millard Fillmore, were vice presidents and only first assumed office upon the death of the sitting president. All ten of the oldest were elected to their first terms. Among the seven most recent presidents, four have made the list of oldest. Yet, overall, the list of youngest presidents saw alterations much more frequently. Cumulatively, the list of oldest presidents has changed so infrequently that the two original oldest presidents, John Adams and Andrew Jackson, still hold places at the bottom of the list. Four of the six great general presidents are on the oldest list. The only two that don't make the list are George Washington and Ulysses S. Grant, with Grant actually holding the fourth place among the youngest. Two of the ten oldest died in office, which is actually the same as the number of youngest presidents to die in office. Among presidential candidates, there are many who could have made the list had they been elected. Had Federalist Charles Pinckney defeated James Madison in 1808, he would have been inaugurated at 63. Had Rufus King defeated James Monroe in 1816, he would have been inaugurated at 61. Henry Clay first ran for the presidency in 1824 when he was just 47. If elected, 
he would have not only become the youngest president for the time, but would still hold a place on the youngest list. Clay continued running for the presidency for many of the following elections. His last major bid was in 1844. If he'd won this time, which actually seemed very probable early in the race, he would have been inaugurated at 67, and to this day would place as the fifth oldest president. As mentioned, if Whig Winfield Scott won in 1852, he would have been 66. Rutherford B. Hayes' opponent, Samuel Tilden, would have taken office at 63. In recent years, two Republicans could have topped the list of oldest presidents. Bill Clinton's opponent, Bob Dole, would have been 73 at his inauguration, and Barack Obama's opponent, John McCain, would have been 72. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and donating on Patreon. Donations from 2 to $15 a month help towards more frequent uploads. Patreon link in the description below.